welcome back to the Cool Fear Channel. I'm your host, Justin the Bat Madrigal, aka the Buff Collector. The information on this channel is time for all collectors and not children. And welcome to episode 72 of Coffee and Toys, guys. As always, we'll go over this week's channel update, this week's toy haul, uh, this week's toy news, and so much more. But first, if you're new, then welcome. This channel is all about cool action figures, analyzing them, hunting them, taking pics of them, and of course, playing with them. If that's your sort of thing, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and hit that bell notification icon so you stay notified when I do upload new content. If you do enjoy this video or any other videos that I put out, please remember to give them a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. With all that being said, guys, once again, welcome to episode 72 of Coffee and Toys, guys. As always, shout out and thank you to the channel sponsor, Entertainment Earth. Check out my Entertainment Earth affiliate link down in the description below. Just check out some cool figures, get some free shipping, and of course, help support the channel. With that being said, guys, we have come once again to another end of a week. Um, it's been quite an eventful week for myself personally. Um, I do want to apologize. I guess this is really the only channel updates that we do have for the channel this week. And it's once again, I do have to apologize for being behind on my videos. Um, I'm actually funny enough ahead on videos, but I was behind this week because there was one particular figure that I wanted to do that I just hadn't done the video for and I was just putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Um, and that figure being the Enter Bay 1-6 scale Kobe Bryant because, well, he just comes with a lot of stuff. So I was just like really uh, not wanting to take him out of the display to take pictures, do all this stuff. Um, but as you saw last week, he was missing because I took the pictures. I intended to do uh, my review, but I just never got around to it. Um, and the reason I wanted to do him was because I did the mask uh, this week as well. So I wanted to keep it somewhat aesthetic, you know. Um, I have a bit of an OCD issue when it comes to that. Like, I just want things to look a little aesthetic. And so I figured the mask being a yellow suited character with uh, Kobe wearing the yellow uh and with Kobe wearing the gold jersey, you know, it would just look more aesthetic in the timeline uh, on the page and everything. So uh, I did upload him a little late. I believe I technically as the filming of this, I haven't even finished editing the video, um, but I should be releasing him on Saturday. And I think I'm going to switch the order of my behind the scenes video and just drop it later tonight uh, because I was technically already ready to go. It just needs to be uploaded and stuff. But as we all know, that's technically my last video of the week, but it's just been a mess with this guy. So I am technically ahead. So for the coming weeks, I will be ahead because I actually technically even already have this week's Epic Shots by Cool Figures post. And I've already done the in-depth behind the scenes toy photography video for that shot. Uh, so I'm actually a full week ahead. And the last time that happened, I let it go to waste. Uh, but I'm not going to let that happen this time. I actually have a list right here of uh, things I need to do in order to stay ahead. So as long as I do two more in-depth behind the scenes videos this weekend, um, my picks for my six scale Bo-Katan and Batman Forever and do three reviews, um, I'll be good. Uh, as long as I do those things this weekend, some point this weekend, I will be good. Um, but yeah, in terms of channel updates, uh, I will be taking another break. Or am I gonna be taking a break? No, I, I don't think I will be taking a break. Well, yeah, okay, so I will be taking a break at the end of the month. Um, technically, I'll be back on Friday, uh, but I'm gonna have been traveling and stuff, so I just, I'm gonna take that weekend off. I'm just gonna relax, unwind, try to uh, recuperate from my trip and everything. So not this coming week or the following week, but the last Sunday of this month there won't be a coffee and toys um but like i said i am ahead on reviews and everything so everything else will be uploaded in the same uh just coffee and toys won't be uploaded the final week of april um but other than that there's no real channel updates uh so why don't we go ahead and talk about this week's toy haul which is non-existent because we didn't pick anything up this week yes we avoided picking anything up now i will say uh, I was gonna get something, however, the guy ended up ghosting me on offer up. So that's that's a first for me. Um, I was a little upset, but at the same time, I got to save some money and everything. So uh, yeah, no new toy haul this week. There's nothing here. Uh, we didn't pick anything up, and uh, yeah. So I guess with that being said, uh, let's talk a little bit of Mando news because uh, we are down to the final two episodes, guys. 
Um, so last week, like I said, my voice was a little strained. My throat was hurting because of uh, puking on leg day the previous uh, two days ago when I filmed that. Um, but this week, as you can tell, my voice is completely fine. My throat is good. Um, so I can definitely talk more on Mando. Um, I won't talk more on John Wick because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Uh, but if you haven't seen John Wick, uh, and it's between John Wick and Mario this weekend, tell your kids, sorry, you're going to go see John Wick. I would highly recommend John Wick. Um, but in terms of Mando, I really like that they're turning the story towards Bo-Katan. Um, it sucks, yes, but I feel like, honestly, I feel like they've told everything they could have with uh, Din Djarin. You know, I feel like uh, you know, they labeled the show The Mandalorian, uh, so that way it's a little more vague, because at first we knew him as Mando and The Mandalorian and all that stuff, uh, but now we know him as Din Djarin, and he's just another person, you know, Paz Vizsla, Din Djarin, bo uh, the only real one that doesn't really have a name so far is the Armorer. I mean, that is just her name, it's just the Armorer. Um, but I feel like The Mandalorian can be anybody there, you know, it could be any mandalorian that we follow or see in this series and so i really do like that they're kind of giving bo katan her time to shine um because there's really not much else for mando to do you know i feel like they really ruined the ending of season two by reuniting grogu and mando again uh, i felt like that was one of the worst decisions ever made because it's like it was this big lead up to them separating and stuff and what's to come and then it's like oh well he's back it's like okay you know i feel like i don't know it's it's starting to feel more like batman and robin where i'm like let's 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 get robin out of there and let's just see batman so he can kick ass and be in some pretty badass situations and everything but uh yeah it seems like they're shifting more focus to bo katan uh, which I do, like I said, I do like, I enjoy her very much as a character. Um, and we'll talk about that actually a little bit later on and how that can tie into future Star Wars movies, which were just announced. But as we know, many Star Wars movies have been announced. Many Star Wars movies have been canceled before even reaching pre-production. And even after being shown off with like a full-on trailer advertisement from the director, we'll get into all that in a bit, but, um... You know, so in this week's episode, this week's episode, honestly, guys, I have to admit, had me up here, had me up down here, up here, down here, up here, down here. It, it, was, it was all over the place. So in terms of overall episode, I feel like it was a throwaway. They really wasted a lot of time showing us this iRobot remake. Um, and that's essentially what it was. It was kind of like a mixture of iRobot and Blade Runner. Um, but I feel like with it being so deep in the season and with, once again, with us not even going anywhere for so long in the season, for them to throw this episode in, it just really, really, really sucks. But I will say, at least we spent the entire time with the Mandalorians and we got to see some battle droids from the Clone Wars era. So that was really cool. And the other cool thing I will say was when I saw Jack Black, I... I thought it was a great addition. I thought he was fun. I thought he was great. Not so much when I saw Lizzo. I mean, she's not really an actress, first and foremost. Let's get that, you know, first and foremost. And if you wanted an actress of that demographic, I feel like Queen Latifah would have been a better option. She's way closer in age to Jack Black than Lizzo. And... I feel like she's a way better actress as well. Obviously, she has years of acting under her belt. Uh, maybe they couldn't get her, but I mean, Viola Davis. Um, there's there's a number of great African-American actresses that have been in the industry that could have done so much better uh, than Lizzo did because she she was just a distraction in the in the entire episode. She just, she she was not good. She just was not good. It was just... It was basically like Jack Black was acting to a wall. But anyways, besides that, the high point of this episode for me personally was not the battle droids. was not Bo-Katan kicking Axe Wolf's ass at the end. It was Doc Brown is officially in the Star Wars canon. Yes, guys. Christopher Lloyd made his cameo appearance in this week's episode. I totally forgot that they had announced that he was going to be in this year's season. Uh, so when I saw him, I 
blew my mind. I was like, I heard the voice and instantly I was like, holy shit. Um, I don't like that they made him a bad guy. I mean, I, I get it. It's a one-off cameo. It's not like he's going to reappear or anything. Or maybe he will. Who knows? Um, but I, I just, it was, it was okay. It was okay of a cameo. I was just really happy to see him. It, I, I'll admit, anytime I see Michael J. Fox or Christopher Lloyd cameo in something, instant 10 out of 10 for me, no matter what else happens in, in that media or whatnot. Um, but overall, like I said, even the end, I absolutely love the end, how bo Chan kicked Axe Wolves' ass. Um, it's funny enough because when they were releasing the Hot Toys, they released Axe a little before Bo, and he's actually like $20 cheaper than she is. Um, but I honestly don't want an Axe Wolves. He's just a bitch, in my opinion. Uh, and this episode proved it even more so when bo -Katan kicked his ass. Now, I do want a Costco Reeves, so when she does get released, I will be picking her up, but I can continue to pass on Axe Wolves. He's, 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 I don't, I don't need an Axe Wolves. He's, he's a little bitch. He doesn't, he has no spot in my collection, no space in my collection for him. But, uh, yeah, I absolutely love the ending, how when they went at it, bo -Katan showed that they are a race of warriors, you know, every time they would collide or he would push her away, throw her out. She would, you know, come back with a technique to kind of close the gap and get back into the battle. You know, like he throws her and she utilizes her grappling uh, rope to tie him up and, you know, kind of gain control over the situation once again. Um, so it really showed them as being a warrior race and, you know, even the females being just as strong, if not better than some of the males there. And honestly, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, well, I guess we could get into that because that's the end of the episode. But all in all, I, I like I said, mixed, mixed feelings on this episode. Highs and lows, highs and lows. Uh, overall, I would say in the grand series, in the grand series, season one, two, and three, I would rate it an eight only because we got to see battle droids. We got Christopher Lloyd. We got Jack Black. And we got that badass battle between bo and Axe Wolf at the end of the episode. In terms of the season, I would still rate it pretty high because it was still a very action-packed and very visual episode that I did enjoy, um, except for a few small parts. And so I would still give it a seven and a half um, in terms of the overarching storyline and where we're at and the conundrum of only having two episodes left. I would rate it a two because it's like, what the fuck? We really did nothing here. But the end was important but i mean we could have we could have done that in the in, in the beginning and it could have been so much easier it was a side quest but anyways um talking about bo uh they did announce three new star wars movies at star wars celebration over in the uk uh the first one being the beginning of the jedi order the first jedi jesus of the jedi if you will um i i don't need to know this i don't need to go back that far i don't need to know this I don't. So for that movie, I don't care whether it's good or whether it's bad because I have absolutely no want. I've never been like, I wonder what the first Jedi was like. Never in my life have I ever thought that ever. So I just have no interest in this movie. Um, so like I said, whether it's good or bad. I really don't care. Um, it can, it's going to be released. And I mean, maybe it'll be released a lot of, you know, Patty Jenkins did a whole ass trailer of her being like, my father, you know, was a fighter pilot. And now I'm going to make a movie about space fighter pilots. And it was all this motivational. And she's like, I'm a female director. That's going to do. And then they ended up just canceling the whole fucking movie. So who knows if these three movies are going to get made. Um, but I guess we can talk about them a bit. Uh, Dave Filoni is in charge of one of them which is meant to tie into the Mandalorian series. Um, so that's the one that I am personally excited about. And if Disney wants to put a strong female, likable character in the forefront, Bo-Katan Disney, Bo-Katan is your character. But of course, Disney's smoking some kind of crack right now. And I think Kathleen Kennedy is going through dementia and Alzheimer's because she had some great work in the 90s. But now her mind is starting to go because as soon as announcing that, she announced a movie bringing back the most hated Star Wars character 
in Star Wars history, Jar Jar Binks. No, I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. Everybody loves Jar Jar now. Ray Star Wars. I'm kidding. Ray Skywalker. Uh, who who made that joke? I think it was uh, Heavy Spoilers or Screen Crush. Shout out to them. Credit to them uh, for making that joke about being race Star Wars. Um, but it was too good for me not to use. Um, but anyways, yeah, they, they're going to make a movie about 15 years after uh, Rise of Skywalker and her rebuilding the Jedi Order. I thought Daisy really said she was never going to return to this role. So I highly doubt that movie's going to get made. Um, and... I, I don't see a majority of the fans wanting that movie to be made, really. We barely got the horrific, sulfur taste of Rise of Skywalker out of our mouth, and now they're like, here's some more! <sighs> Disney, Bo-Katan, Ahsoka Tano, Princess Leia, Padme Amidala, that is four female characters right there that you can build shows around that people will want to see nobody's gonna want to see this fucking ray skywalker bullshit but you know what that's what's gonna happen or like i said if it's gonna happen so many star wars movies have been announced and so many star wars movies have been canceled so we'll even see if any of this comes to fruition um if anything i would say that mando the movie is going to happen for sure because of the hype behind mando dave filoni's attached then the first jedi and then if anything probably ray honestly knowing disney they're probably going to for sure make the ray one because it's their property and you guys know why they push those new sequel characters and properties so much right because those are disney properties those are star wars disney properties but when they push the old stuff Georgie still gets a cut. He still has that royalty cut. So that's why they want you to be like, Ray! Yay! Because then they can be like, Yay! Money! When you go, Yeah, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, Boba Fett. They're like, Yeah! Boba Fett. Luke. We got, we got $2 left because they've had to pay off George and stuff. So... And I think they also have to pay off likeness rights to like Mark Hamill and, um, you know, uh, fuck, why am I, why? Tamar Morrison, I was blanking on his name. You know, I'm pretty sure they have to pay likeness rights to them. Whereas in Daisy Ridley's contract, it probably stated, you get no likeness rights. We control your likeness rights. We are the overlord Disney. Ho -ho! Disney, please don't come after me. Um, but anyways, guys, besides that, they showed off the new Ahsoka trailer, which does look phenomenal. I am all in on that one. Um, and then they showed a uh, skeleton crew, which is basically a bunch of kids in Star Wars, which I've never understood that. I've never, un Hollywood has this thought process that kids want to see kids in these roles. It's like, when I was a kid, I never saw kids in a movie, in a franchise like this and was like, I want to be that kid. I'd always be like, I want to be the main character when I grow up, but I don't want to be the fucking kid. But obviously Hollywood has this fascination with sticking kids in these, you know, adult franchises and not, not in that sense, but in these dangerous adult situations in terms of action and all this stuff where adults would barely survive. And they're like, yeah, 10 year old can do that shit. No problem. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, Disney owns Star Wars, so we're just going to keep getting this pumped out, pumped out, pumped out. They're going to keep doing stuff. Stuff's going to fail like their Galactic Star Cruiser. But with that being said, guys, why don't we go ahead and talk about this week's toy news. And honestly, guys, there is not much at all. Um, so no Mesco news this week. So that's the fun part, I guess. Uh, <laughs> sarcastically says. Um, but we do have, uh, I guess, a little bit of McFarlane Toys news because they didn't announce or show off any figures, which was really odd and rare. Todd, are you okay? Are, are you feeling okay? Because usually you give us at least one a week, if not maybe five or six. But this week it's been all quiet on the Eastern Front. And so all he really announced was that they're going to be making a new McFarlane Collector Edition uh, whether that means statues or figures, I have no clue. It just said McFarlane Collector's Edition coming soon. 
that was it. So we'll just have to wait and see when we get more info on that. Uh, but Hot Toys did have an announcement since Star Wars Celebration is going on. This year does mark the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. And so they are releasing a Return of the Jedi Darth Vader. Now this does create a conundrum for me because I do want to add a Darth Vader to my collection. I was thinking originally I was going to add the Empire one, but now they're coming out with the Return. I may go with the Return only because of the price point, but if I can get an Empire for a decent price, I may go with that. But I am still going to pick up at least one special Deluxe uh, Kenobi, or I mean not a Deluxe, a regular Kenobi one because he's battle damaged. And I was originally going to pick up two of them so I can display one battle damage and one not, but now I'm thinking picking up a classic Empire Vader and then a battle damage reimagined Disney 2022 Vader next to him uh, because they do have some slight differences in the suits and everything um, and I do want a classic Vader in the display eventually. But once again, phenomenal job on this Vader and um, look for it to come out next year on the 41st anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Um, I was watching Jedi Patrol when they were going over all these announcements and stuff and um, they made a very valid point. It would have made more sense for them to have announced this figure last year in preparation for the 40th so that it would be ready for the 40th. But it is what it is. It's it's Hot Toys, guys. What are you going to do about it? So, uh, moving on to some NECA news. Once again, no solicitations, no pre-orders, no really showing off. Uh, besides the fact that it is the beginning of April and they always do that April takeover. Um, where they show us, you know, behind the scenes footage of them making another April figure. And this year, they are bringing to us the Mirage April figure. And so, this will be very, very interesting in my opinion because... All they showed off were the sketches by Eastman that he sent in for them to utilize for sculpting and everything. And the reason I say this is going to be very interesting because so many people, there's controversy behind this character in the Mirage comics, you know. Um, a lot of people will say she's black, she's African American. Um, I've read interviews where Peter Lair says she's mixed with uh, Latin and Asian descent or Latin and African. I, I don't remember, but I... I remember him distinctly saying she's mixed, and I think he meant more mixed with Latin. I think he said she was Latin and white or Latin and Asian. I can't remember, but and that's why she was darker with curly hair. But I guess we're going to find out what they truly meant, because when this figure is produced, we're obviously going to get it in a certain color tone. And so I'm really curious to see um, what Eastman dictates to them, because obviously that's going to be the final say is Eastman. He's going to give him the final say. And so this will give us our definitive answer as to what actual race and ethnicity April O'Neil is from the Mirage comics. So that's pretty interesting because there's always been like a little argument as to what exactly she is. Um, I'm very much interested to see what the final outcome is going to be. You know, um, honestly, to me, either way, it really doesn't matter. I'm just saying people say she's one thing and I've read interviews of the actual creator saying other things and who she's based off of was a, a Latina. And so, I mean, there are some dark skinned Latinas, trust me, there are, um, but you know, I don't, we'll have to wait and see, but that's all they showed us so far for this week. Uh, so I have to wait and see. Um, there's not too much news this week. So I did see that, um, I don't know the name of the company, but they're uh, the reimagined Star Wars figures into like Japanese old school Japanese Imperial figures. Um, they did show off their Mandalorian Remnant Stormtrooper, so he will be coming to their line very soon. Super 7 announced their G.I. Joe Wave 4, so now you can get Baroness, Zartan, Stalker, and Gunho, all for pre-order right now. Uh, and I believe Wave 1 just started hitting people's doorsteps, um, so yeah. I'm not into Super 7, you know, okay, so I've... I've held my tongue on Super 7 for a while, but to be honest, guys, they're not the best. They have a lot of QC issues, their joints are super loose, and for the price point, you definitely would expect more from them, um, you know, from those price points, but 
you speak with your wallet, right, guys? You speak with your wallet. And so I personally am done and out from Super 7. Unless I can find some on sale for a really good price, you know, on clearance and sale. Then I may pick up another turtle or two just to, you know, get some variation and whatnot. Uh, but in terms of everything else, I'm just, I'm done with Super 7. You know, they're, not only do they manufacture stuff very cheaply, but the materials that they use are not the best either. So, um, but yeah, Super 7 did announce their way for G.I. Joe, so that is up for pre-order now. Uh, Marvel had one new announcement this week, and that is a new Scarlet Witch figure, guys. So look out for her hitting stores sometime later this year. Star Wars had somewhat of like two announcements but one of them had like four in it um so before i started filming um there's really only one announcement and that was the book of boba fett black chrysanthemum uh so we are finally getting a book of boba fett version of him instead of a repainted chewbacca that's supposed to be the comic book version of black chrysanthemum um but before i started filming they did also announce during star wars celebration that a new wave of bad batch characters are going to be coming well not so much a well it's a new wave but new not new characters it's the same characters we've already gone from season one just in their season two repaint and i'll be honest with you guys i did enjoy season one of bad batch season two completely lost me i had no care for it at all i didn't care to see them doing these little mercenary runs little side quests i didn't care for their little repaint of their armor either it looks so childish and so stupid um, and so yeah, that's what we're getting in this wave. The only figure that does actually catch my interest is the new clone commando. You guys know I love my troopers. You guys know I love army building my troopers. And so I am definitely going to be picking up like, I shit you know, like 10 clone commandos. Um, because I love commandos. I love commandos even more than arc troopers. Hot toys, please, 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 please give us a team of commandos if you guys give us the team from the commando video game oh my god i would be in fucking heaven that's that would be my grail figures right here if i can list out or ask hot toys to make any figures it'd be the omega squad i believe or delta squad from the video game from back in the day with fixer scorch sev and of course boss so Hopefully one day they do make them, and when they do, I will be there ready to order them instantly. So that wraps it up for, oh, that wraps it up for Star Wars news. However, Hasbro, the great Hasbro, has fallen to its knees, to its consumers, rightfully so, and window packaging will return to the Hasbro line later this year, guys. Yes, Hasbro finally caved. They couldn't hide their ways they couldn't hide their their tactics you know in my opinion they did a lot of illegal things false advertising um you know they technically they advertised that it was going to be saving you know money and plastic and all that stuff or not money but plastic and all this other you know waste in that but it really it was only saving them money um you know there was pictures of renders and figures that weren't actually in the box but when you pulled it out there was pins where there weren't supposed to be pins Technically, false advertising once again. Um, so, it was just probably in their best interest, according to their lawyers, to just go back to the window packaging and just not get the extra few dollars from every sale. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's the big news there. And so, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on into Diamond Select. Shout out to you to Diamond Select, especially their marketing manager, Zach O, for sending me over all the information and picks for this part of the news. Uh, so, just two new announcements out of Star Wars Celebration. We are getting a 1-7 scale Jackson statue uh, full-on statue of the rabbit character from Star Wars, and we are getting a 1-6 mini bus of Dave Filoni's Trapper Wolf. So, yeah, guys, like I said, not too much this week. It's been a very slow week. Um, now that I think about it, usually my phone's going, like, crazy with announcements and alerts every day about a new figure being shown off, new toy and stuff, but this week it was, it was really quiet. It was really mellow, really calm. Um, and as you can see, I guess it was just a calm and dry week all around. I mean, we had very little news. We had no toy haul. Uh, we had no real channel update or news or anything. So not too much going on in the world of the toys this week. So, I mean, 
gives us a chance to breathe, I guess, right, guys? It gives us a chance to, you know, sit back and admire our own personal collection. You know, I feel like a lot of the times, uh, so many new toys are coming out, so many new figures that we don't take the time to appreciate what we actually have. You know, the other day, um, I had, like I said, I was behind on my videos because on Thursday I had intended to do uh, toy photography and uh, record reviews all day, essentially, but... Um, unfortunately my dog got a little injured and so I was trying to get him to jump on the bed even though I probably shouldn't have. It's a good thing he didn't because I took him to the vet and she was like, yeah, he needs to be resting and everything. But he wasn't really having jumping and so he kind of like backed up into me and I bumped into my cabinet display. All my Mezcos, all my Beast Kingdom, all my Rumble Society just came crashing down. And I had to spend the day reorganizing, reposing, redoing everything so that way it's there. And that gave me the time to sit there and really take inventory of what I have, you know. Like I said, so many new things are coming out constantly that, you know, we tend to forget what we have. Uh, the other day, I was looking at my display right here, and I started counting everything. And I was like, holy shit, I am four Hot Toys away from 50 Hot Toys in less than a year. I started collecting Hot Toys at Star Wars Celebration in June of last year. Last year, Star Wars Celebration happened in June. Um, this year, it was moved up, I guess. But um, yeah, that's where I got my first Hot Toy, which was the Death Watch Mandalorian. So this is all your fault, motherfucker. <laughs> and funny enough, if you remember, when I first unboxed him and I did that video of me unboxing him and my first experience with a Hot Toy, I was very unhappy. I was like, this guy barely moves. He looks great, but he d barely moves. He's light as hell. Feels a little cheapish, kind of like third party-ish. But obviously my mindset has definitely changed, you know, and I've learned that there's different body types, different things, different companies, different ways of doing things. And so yeah, guys, you know, take the time to take inventory of what you have and enjoy what you have before ooing and eyeing about the latest thing that they did reveal and stuff so it's been a nice relaxing week now that i think about it in terms of toy news not having to be like oh my god i gotta buy that i gotta buy that i gotta buy that um so yeah guys it's kind of just been like you know mezco just sent out batman 89 they're kind of just like let's just take a step back let them let them have at it for a while mcfarland he Blue is load, you know, showing us all those movie figures from The Flash. Um, that's really all he showed off was uh, the Batwing from The Flash this week, but we already knew that was coming, so I don't really need to talk about that too much. Um, and, yeah, I mean, all the other companies, like I said, Marvel, they showed off one figure. Star Wars, surprisingly, for it being Star Wars Celebration, only showed off the Bad Batch figures. I don't know if more is to come tomorrow, um, but, you know, I'm filming this on Friday, so... We'll get back to that next week if they do announce anything on Saturday and Sunday. So, yeah, guys, I'm pretty much just rambling on from here because there wasn't much else to talk about in the toy news community. And so with that being said, guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to listen to me talk about toys. I really do appreciate it, guys. As always, shout out and thank the channel sponsor, Entertainment Earth. Check out my Entertainment Earth affiliate link down in the description below to check out some cool figures, get some free shipping, and of course, help support the channel. With that being said, guys, I've been your host, Jesse the Bat Madrigal a.k.a. The Buff Collector. And as always, have a great fucking day. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed those picks, you can find the full images over on Instagram at Cool Figures. And I do also have a separate Instagram account for my more thought out, planned out, more edited picks called Epic Shots by Cool Figures. Check it out. If you like what you see, leave me a follow there as well. And if you guys like unboxings, check me out over on TikTok at Cool Figures. That's where I post all of my unboxings and check me out every sunday for coffee and toys a weekly toy news toy talk podcast where we will go over all the latest and great toy news reveals pre-orders weekly toy haul and so much more and join me every wednesday over on instagram for coffee and toys live where i will speak to a new guest every week about toys toy hunting toy photography and so much more Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to listen to me talk about toys. I really do appreciate it. 